That's seven minutes away. And then the injury bug strikes another watchable young star. Just how hurt is Zion? Woj has that answer and more. Let's get up starting right now. Delighted to have you with us on a football Friday. We have a fantastic array here to get into what really in some ways and we hope that we have dodged a bullet here in the biggest possible way. What could arguably have been one of the worst nights of the NFL season if it goes the wrong direction. Let's go to the highlights of last night. The Chiefs and the Broncos a mile high. And Patrick Mahomes, the question coming in was about the ankle. And in the warm-ups, look, he looks fine. He's running around. He looks okay. And then he looks pretty good here, too, throwing a 21-yard touchdown to McCall Hardman. Look, he's right now in a tremendous groove with his wide receiver core. I don't care if he has one ankle, two ankles, no ankles. If he's out there barefoot, the guy <laughs> just is in a nice groove and understands this offense as good as you possibly could. But then then came this second quarter Chiefs are up 10 6. This is a fourth down and one from the five yard line. You see Mahomes on the sneak and then just watch the body language watch the expression watch the helmet go off and you can see you can tell the difference between a player thinking he's hurt and a player thinking he's injured. The concern is overwhelming. Watch the right knee closely. You will see it get pinned in the pile. And then more significantly, watch as they pop it back into place. Mm -hmm. I see the faces of all the football players on my set grimacing as they watch. Now the good news is he would walk off the field under his own power. Look at the respect. All the players on both teams showing for Patrick Mahomes as he goes off for x-rays. He'd be ruled out for the remainder of the game. Much more on his condition coming up in a few minutes. Meanwhile, a rest of the game to be played. And the Broncos held the Chiefs to just a field goal there. So it's 13-6 and then here comes that Kansas City defense. Look, it was about time that they woke up last night and they did along the front seven. They got after the passer in a way they haven't all year long and they need to carry this forward now. That's a defensive touchdown. So it's 20-6 and then here comes Matt Moore on in place of the injured Mahomes. And here's a nice play. You'll watch Tyreek Hill going all the way across the formation, getting behind the defense, and no one's going to yeah, get that's him. a tremendous touch pass. Just enough movement in the pocket by Matt Moore. He's not going to make you forget Pat Mahomes, but just be able to move just enough to get it in the playmaker's hands quickly and put it on them and let them run after the catch. Just let them do the work. Among those celebrating after the win, Patrick Mahomes with his teammates. But, of course, the news, not all good. I feel terrible for Pat. I, I wish him well. I hope the best for him. I don't know what it is, but um, that was hard to see. Um, but no one, you got to go in. Uh, you kind of got to get your head straight real quick and uh, go try and win a ball game. We've seen teams that let themselves down after one of your best players or the best player gets <clears throat> gets hurt, in particular the quarterback. And I was proud that our guys just stepped up and, and kept battling and, and really uh, everybody up their game, I thought. So you saw Mahomes in there celebrating to some degree with his teammates afterwards. He would tweet this awesome team win. Love my brothers. Thank you for all the prayers. Everything looking good so far. Hashtag God is good. Hashtag Chiefs Kingdom. Let's get to the man with all the information. That's our insider Adam Schefter joins us now. Shefty, what are we hearing on Mahomes? Well, Greeny, I think right now the Chiefs believe this was the best case scenario, but that is prior to the MRI today and what amounts to basically the most important MRI in franchise history. The feeling in going into that MRI is that Patrick Mahomes is going to be out at least three weeks, which would sideline him for games against the Packers, Vikings, and Titans. But we don't know what that MRI is going to show up. We don't know if it's going to reveal ligament damage. And if it reveals ligament damage, then it could be that Patrick Mahomes would face season-ending surgery. But again, going in, they don't believe that's the case, but they don't know that's the case. And that's why today's MRI is so important for this team going forward. All right, we'll be obviously in touch with you all day long, Shefty, as we continue to wait for the results of that MRI. We showed you the Chiefs' upcoming next six games yesterday with their FBI chance of winning. Look at it today. All of these numbers have decreased by at least 5%, a 13% drop coming uh, against their next opponent, which is the Packers. There's a bye week in there you'll see after their fourth game. They have four more games than their bye if you're keeping close track of that. And I want to, as we bring this out to the table, Sanchez, start with you. Yeah. You had a very similar injury while you were in college. Quickly take us through how that works. Sure. So I'm not a doctor. Let's get that straight. Right. I'm just telling you from my own experience and speaking to doctors from the Jets and a former trainer from USC, when you dislocate your kneecap like I did, you dislocate it laterally. If it relocates itself on its own when you straighten your leg, that's more of a sublux. What they did and physically had to manipulate the knee to push it back in, the issue is underneath your kneecap, the doc talked about this chondral defect because once you manually, manually push that kneecap back in, 
you're basically messing with the brake pad that's under your kneecap. And if you break any chunks off, that's the issue. That's what they're looking for in this MRI today. I but guarantee in your you case, this, you came back and played right. three weeks later. Uh, four weeks later, four about weeks a month later. later. Yeah. But it hindered you or did not? Were you fine? Definitely hindered me. It's something you think about. You're going to be favoring it. He's definitely going to play with some sort of brace to kind of like on the outside, the lateral side of his knee. He's going to have some sort of C-joint brace to keep it gliding in track because it's going to be prone to pop out now. Once it happens, it's, you're prone to have it happen again. Let me turn to you guys here quickly on this because even before, when, I, when you see this happen, even before I started thinking about the impact on the Chiefs and the impact on their Super Bowl championship hopes, my first thought was this is the worst thing for the league, that the quarterbacks, and particularly this one, make the game so watchable. That was actually the first thought I had. Look, Andrew Luck's down, Cam Newton. He's not playing right now. And the Chiefs have three primetime games the rest of the year. And so what makes Pat Mahomes unbelievable? It's not just his arm talent. It's how dynamic he is. He can run around. So even if he comes back, like, is he going to be exactly the same guy that he was at the beginning of the season? Probably not. And so, yeah, it's, this is going to hurt because if you're, not, if you're not a diehard Kansas City fan or a diehard fan of another team, like, you're going to casually tune in to watch this guy play. I agree with you. When you talk about the quarterbacks, the NFL has done everything that they can to protect the quarterbacks. Anything outside of now these fluke injuries that happened to uh, Ben Roethlisberger, now also Patrick Mahomes. So when the quarterbacks are getting hurt, it does hurt the league. But – there's still a lot of football out there with a lot of good players that we can tune into. So the NFL needs to kind of draw onto that. You help the marketing on that on that aspect for the other players. All right, so Lewis, let's then spin it to the element of the Chiefs here. They are yeah. a team that has already lost a little bit of ground in a chase with the Patriots. They've lost a home game against the Texans, which is maybe the next team coming up. How does this impact them if he misses, let's call it, three or four games? Well, it obviously impacts their ability to make special plays. And he, he's the eraser. He's kind of like the equalizer for them when they're not playing and hitting on all cylinders as an overall football team. But what will happen now is kind of like the same thing. Like, I remember talking to Doug Peterson about this when Carson Wentz went out and when um, Nick Foles came in. Now Matt Moore just has to try and not be Pat Mahomes because he's not. Now he just has to be a point guard. Just distribute the football. They're set up on offense enough so where – they have enough playmakers to just get the ball in their hands quickly. Don't extend plays. Don't run. Look, you're not going to make those kind of plays Pat does. Just put it in the hands of Tyreek. Put it in the holes. Put it in the hands of McCole Hardman. Put it in the hands of Travis Kelsey and let them do the work. And Andy will make sure that the offense funnels that way. And Matt's been around long enough to know better. But and, and that's Lou, where we that's need to talk about the be. defense also. That's that, the, that was where exactly. I was going to go yes. next. Because the defense fumble. has been a major hindrance. Mm, correct. They can't even get off the field in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, even with Patrick Mahomes, as poor as the defense had played, aside from last night, sure. still saying, look, they're, they're a wild card team. They're going to lose in the wild card and maybe divisional round. If the Defense steps up the way that they played against the Broncos uh, uh, with the pressure, with the turnovers, the takeaways, the touchdowns, then you don't have to worry as much during this stretch when you don't have Mahomes. You have to worry about them when down the road now, obviously, when you face the Patriots and better teams. But the defense has to take the onus that the, the theme – of this team is now defensive as opposed to offensive. And the key what happened last night, they were able to stop the run early in the game. Mm. They were able to score and get a lead. The Kansas City Chiefs have a good pass rush. They've always had a good pass rush. The problem is, is when you're playing teams and they can run the football on you and you're not scoring like the Chiefs, they can continue to run the football and wear them down like the Texans that were able to do, like the Colts were able to do. That's what changed the math for them last night was the lead and they shut the run down early. They discouraged it and then they were able to feast on Joe Flacco. And let's not forget also, I mean, look, they were playing against one of the worst offensive lines in, yes. in the football. The Denver Broncos have a whole nother set of issues that were really brought to light last night. But there's no question, Frank Clark actually, it was like his introduction to the NFL for 2019 last night. And they've been waiting on that. And there's no doubt that now they need to go ahead and keep continue that on forward because if they don't, then look, with Pat or not with Pat, they were going to be in trouble anyway. A quick final thought on this, and obviously we will have much more on this as our morning continues here. But Sanchez, you were telling me in the meeting this morning how tough it is to be a guy like Matt Moore, just get up, go in there, and now have to sort of keep that ship afloat for of several course. weeks. And, and I said it tongue-in-cheek, but I've been in restaurants and bars, and you hear somebody say something about, oh, you know, Sanchez, when he played for the Jets, he was this, that, and the other. And I've never batted an eye, fine. I heard something last night, and people were like, oh, Matt Morrison, he sucks. I literally jumped out of my seat. I was like, hey, man, you don't know how hard it is. <laughs> and I wouldn't even say that for myself. I just – you go to bat for a guy like that because I've been in that situation. 
But like you guys said, everybody else is going to have to step up their game and make it as easy as possible on this guy. He's played a lot of football, but that doesn't mean it's a guaranteed success. So my hat's off to him. This is not an easy position. Just I wish him the very best. Again, so this is, I mean, Shefty said it. It's the most important MRI in franchise history. It's the most important MRI of the NFL season. It will definitely determine whether the Chiefs at some point again become a no. Super Bowl contender or most likely do not. We'll have much more football as we go. But let me get you to the Bronx last night. The other huge game.